Christmas is here. Frost in the air, lights red and green, shining bright everywhere. Feeling a chill, cocoa and spice, warming it up till you're cozy and nice. People everywhere, brave the frosty air to see. Singing deck of the hall. Everything's set and the snow will be on its way. For Christmas Day. Everyone's out, boots in the snow. I and a friends and wherever they go. Out on the ice, you hear all the Bells ring and the kids don't want to go to bed. It's that time of year when we gather near and hear the chestnuts are on the fire, carols sung by a choir. The people you meet in the street give a smile to say. It's Christmas Day. Good will to all the bells will Join WNEP personalities as they share family traditions and more. Live from our homes to yours. It's WNEP's unconventional holiday special. And good evening to you all for the third, I guess it is the third unconventional holiday special here on WNEP. Uh, we've had some great times in the past and looking forward to as good a time as possible with this year. We're going to have some fun, sing some songs, um, watch some demonstrations. So it'll all be a good time and it's time to get going. And this is a story of, from a person who has a very personal background with it. it it's a collection that started way back, uh, but with a great meaning to it. Here's Emily Cress with her collection of nutcrackers. Yes. Hey, Mike. Yeah, I'm just hanging out at the house right now with one of our ceramic Christmas trees that uh, has been in our family for as long as I can remember. But like you had mentioned, the one thing that I'm focusing on today is my collection of nutcrackers. Um, if you follow me on my Facebook page, uh, I posted a photo on top of my refrigerator here um, is my collection of nutcrackers. And it all started when I was first born. My grandmother every year for Christmas would get me a nutcracker. So every year that was part of my gift. And it's something that she really took a lot of thought into and really picked something personal. I'm going to, I have a step stool <laughs> in the kitchen here. Everything is up on top of the refrigerator because the collection is so big. So I'm just going to step up here. Um, so yes. So I counted and there are actually 28 nutcrackers up here. And I am just going to flip my camera to, oh technical here that camera okay so as you can see here i have a whole lot of um nutcrackers so okay so as you can see a lot of options so i don't know which one is my favorite they are all so unique in their own way so like i mentioned before each one kind of has a different story behind it so over here, we have the Queen of Hearts. I love Alice in Wonderland. So obviously Queen of Hearts is a big part of that story. One year, um, I guess I just really loved pizza. So we have little Nutcracker Pizza Man. I had an obsession with penguins at one point. I think this was like one that I got when I was in like sixth grade and it has a little scarf on it. 
Um, where is, oh, my hippie is all the way in the back here. Ah. I love anything with peace signs. So that was something really fun. Um, and then after my grandmother passed away back in 2019, my godmother actually picked up the tradition for me. So some of those additions, Alice in Wonderland here, the white rabbit, and then Alice herself with the Cheshire cat and the little tea set. And then we have some really fun ones like this um, Jim Shore piece. <laughs> so, move it and everything. So I cherish this so much every year um, when I put it out, just getting every single piece up and together just brings back so many good memories. So it's always a fun time to get everything out and just reminisce on all of those Christmases that we got to spend with my grandmother, even though she's no longer with us. Well, so. you were you you were fortunate. It's it's a it's a great collection, actually. Uh, you know, uh, let me ask you something. What is the story behind the Nutcracker? Uh, we have the figures here, but what's the real meaning behind them all? I feel like that's something you know the history of, like what Nutcrackers like what they were made for. Yeah. I don't know, Mike. I think you should tell me what that means. Do you know? <laughs> no, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. So, but you I'll tell you what. I figured you were the guy to ask. Well, yeah, sometimes, but you know, I don't know everything, and the, the story behind Nutcrackers is one of those things I don't know. <laughs> so, well, I but it is a lovely collection, though, really, to uh, to see them from. Are they from all parts of the country or all parts of the world? Um, I don't think they're from all across the world, um, but some of them, like the Jim Shore pieces are like handmade. Um, ah. So, yeah, so stuff like that's really cool, you know, to have that part of the collection in there. Yeah, real good. Okay, well, thank you for sharing, Emily. And um, if you think of anything, again, we'll be back later on. Perfect, we'll see later. you then. Okay. All right, now we turn our attention to the morning crew. And when I say we turn our attention to them without any kind of introduction, you must understand that I'm not really sure what they're going to do. We're just kind of winging it. So they've recorded something that they wanted to, uh, to have us put on the show. And I have about as much idea as you as to what it is. Given the morning shift, it's anybody's guess. So, ladies and gentlemen, may we present Elizabeth Worthington and the morning crew. Hello, everybody. So, as you'll notice, it is light out right now because we're not awake at 8 o'clock at night because we wake up so early in the morning. So, this is a taped segment where we're going to talk about our Christmas Day tradition. So, Joe, everyone's dying to know. No, what do you do on Christmas not Day? Dying to know. The, the people they're need not to know. Dying to know. The people need to know. What do you do on Christmas? As I think a lot of folks realize, I'm not a Christmas guy, but that, don't call me a Scrooge. I love every day as a holiday and a great day to be alive because here's what happens on Christmas. I stand like this and my wife pushes me around all day. Here's where we're going, here's what we're doing. I'm carrying crock pots. I'm visiting my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law. I'm coming back from my sister's house. It's go, 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 do, 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 long mass. You're it's just a, along for the ride. It's an interruption to my great life every other day. But it's great to be with family and friends too, so I appreciate that. But this yeah, is so it's weird. A, I feel like I'm interviewing you. I, well, it's just a lot. <laughs> it's a lot that I'm honored, but yet at the same time, it stresses me. What about you? Well, does does Renny run the show? Well, she does. But what's interesting <laughs> is, and Joe can relate to this, is Christmas completely has changed for him from what I experience. Where Christmas when you have little kids is just magic. I think, Joe, yes. you would agree with that. Yes. So for us, I mean, it'll be getting up early Christmas morning. And by early, someone will be up at 2, 3 o'clock. 2 or 3 o'clock? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they get up early. Someone's going to be up overnight and be like, we got to go see, we got to go yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's trying to keep them in bed longer and everything like that. Yeah, Santa comes at like 2 or 3 o'clock at night. And then going out and they want to rip into everything all at once. 
and it's trying to slow them down, appreciate each cherish one. It, do you guys do the dad right. thing? This is the very stereotypical dad move. While we're ripping open the presents and everything, he'll be walking around with the trash bag, yes, gathering yes, up all the wrapping yes, paper. Yes, like yes. it is the most important job yes, on earth. Because you have to get rid of the stress as soon as possible and garbage is stress. But that's part of the fun is just wrapping See, paper all no, over the place. It. Because we as dads know that if the, the paper accumulates, as soon as they get the toys, they're gonna rip them mm -hmm. open. There's gonna be parts all over the place <laughs> yeah. that we've got to assemble. Yeah. And then the paper's gonna bury all that. Yeah. So, but it, but it really is, it's, it's, when you have little kids, it's just incredible. This yeah. whole season is. Yeah. You know, their, their excitement is at a level that we kind of remember from us being kids, but you just don't even realize. It's at a level you don't see any time the rest of the year. It's They're so funny so because we're all, all three of us are at very different stages. You have older kids, you have younger kids, and I'm in like awkward limbo <laughs> land where I don't have kids, but I'm too old to have, you know, a lot, bunch of presents on Christmas morning. So I kind of just hang out with my parents and my siblings and we exchange presents with each other, which is still kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is, it's a, it's a great holiday. No yes. matter what stage you're in, it's just, you're right. There's so many different phases of this. But what about the crock pot? Will you be carrying crock <laughs> I will still be carrying the crock pot and we will still be going to the in-laws and we do all that too. And then and Joe will relate to this too, is that when you have the kids, the last thing they want to do is open all their presents and then leave and go to grandma's yeah. house. Because yeah. they got to bring their them, presents bring the presents with them. But it's all part of the whole thing. And yeah. this we can tie everyone together in the Northern Hemisphere after Christmas, the days start getting longer. That's a celebration. I think everyone can appreciate Let's that. Let's go. All right. All right. Celebrate that. All right. <laughs> Have Merry a great Christmas, rest everybody. of your night, everybody. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and Merry Christmas to you all. You mean um, me you're not supposed to get up at three in the morning to go look for your gifts? I've been wrong all these years. Oh, my word. <laughs> oh, well. Can't help myself. Got to get down there, get them gifts, and have a good time because it is Christmas. Ladies and gentlemen, we now bring to you a vocal duet. Yo, vocal duet. Yay! Hello, everyone. Hi. This is Chelsea Strube and Claire Apri. And ladies, you're about to give us a recital, as it were. Yes, that almost did not happen. Oh, boy. Oh. My cure, it's been a day. But, you know, by a Christmas miracle, we have a yeah. keyboard that works, internet. That kind of works. But most importantly, music to share with everyone. That's the whole point of Christmas. Chelsea, did you grow up with music around Christmas I, time? Always, always. We always sang. Even we had my father's Christmas this past weekend. And instead of saying grace, he said, how about a carol? And we all sang Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Oh, that's so fun. So for new people in the family, they were probably like, what? <laughs> but music and singing, especially around Christmas time, has always been a tradition. What about you? Absolutely, yes. I grew up around the piano, and every Christmas, my siblings and I would do these full-on concerts for all of our family members. In fact, one of them is here in the corner. My little sister Ashley is here. You may hear, you may hear her angelic voice. Maybe she'll sing with us. Maybe. Maybe, Maybe she'll trust. say hello. Maybe she'll say hello. But she's hanging out in the corner. She's hanging there. out. But you know, <laughs> it's just a great thing. You know, whether you hear it in church whether you hear it on the radio, I really think music is how you get into the festive spirit. What do you think, Mike? Oh, yeah. I, it, it, without it, there there is no Christmas season, I think. You know, you've got to have the old standbys that you can rely on, the music you can count on to bring you through the holiday. Sleigh bells ringling, jing, ting, tingling. Two. <laughs> now, what's your favorite Christmas carol, Mike? What's your favorite one? Oh, man, I... You know, I never really chose a, a favorite one. Um, boy, I don't know. I, you know, it depends on the time of the night, I guess, and um, the day before or the day after. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a favorite. I, frankly, I just love them all. Really, I love to hear them, and I love to hear nice people, good people sing them. That's important. You're gonna get your Christmas wish, then, Mike. You want to tell we us? Can we can hope. We can, we're going to be great. This is going to be great. You know, Chelsea, we we went out live right before we put the Sunday show together uh, a couple weeks ago, and we asked the viewers what their favorite songs were. And Chelsea, how did that go? It went really well. We had a lot of great responses, and we took all those suggestions into consideration, but we also chose a couple of our favorites 
that um, particularly lend themselves to a harmony. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You want to tell them what we're gonna do first? We uh, our first song will be not so silent night. Silent night. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> and Let's then hear it. in a manger. Oh, good. Okay. Excellent. All right. You count us down, Mike. <laughs> okay. We'll go back from five, four, three, <clears throat> two, one. Blast off. <laughs> Chelsea. Thank you, Susie. Very nice. Can we get to, do you think we might be able to get another one uh, from you? Yeah, in a manger. Coming right up, Mike. <laughs> How about that? We'll do, Anytime. Uh, maybe we'll do two verses. We'll do two verses. Just All right. Yeah. Two. Whatever you like. Whatever sounds good. The first two? The first two or the first and the third? Mm, I don't know. Ashley, what do you think? Let's do first and the third. First, first and, and the, the third. third. Okay. I'll play us okay. a little intro. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, it's all clear. It's, it's us. We're, this is what we're <laughs> you, know what I, you know what I was thinking about while you guys were singing? Um, that part of the beauty of those carols is that they bring back memories oh, for yeah, each yeah. and every one of us. I can almost tell you where I was each time I've heard that thing play in my house, in my parents' house, uh, in here. Uh, it just brings back the memories, you know, of the people and the places you've been and the, the people you've loved, actually, over the years. That's so Definitely. sweet, Mike. Oh. I mean, I remember probably, I remember, maybe not the first time I sang in Way in the Manger, but I remember the first church that I have in the back of my mind, seeing Away uh -huh. in the Manger and being in the Christmas play. And oh, wait, wait, wait. What character were you in the Christmas play? I was Gabriel the angel. Oh my gosh, so was I. Oh my god. I'll post a picture. I'll post a picture yes. of my brother and I. He had he I have a twin brother and he had Murph. Oh uh -huh. with one of the wise men and I was Gabriel. 
And I, my sister who is here, she actually was Mary. She had the Ooh. honor of playing Mary. Well, I played the chicken. Um, <laughs> she played Mary. So I knew my sister was meant for showbiz then. Um, <laughs> it's a big role. It's really competitive. Mike, did you ever get to do the Christmas play? Who did you play? No, I didn't. Um, I never, I, you know, I had stage fright. Oh, um, that's so, yeah, I know. That's, that's interesting. You know, I could see him playing a wise man. You know, he's the wise man of the uh, station. So that's that's what I would see. Or a shepherd. A shepherd, yes. Over Overlooking yeah. and keeping everyone safe. Absolutely. Or yeah. Uh, I'm good at shepherding, you know, uh, nighttime out in the field somewhere. Yeah. I could I could sing to my heart's content and nobody would hear me, which is hey. except the sheep. Maybe next Christmas special, you can practice this entire year. So next year, you can do it. <laughs> New Year's resolution. New Year's resolution. Do you have any New Year's resolutions, Mike? Um, I, well, I'm pretty much perfect. So, you yeah. know, <laughs> there's no place to go, actually. No, I... Actuated. The... the, the, uh, the uh, New Year's resolution thing always got me because I, like four million other people across the United States, violate it on the on the, the next day after the new year. I'm filled with intent on the on New Year's Day. I will I will do this for the rest of this year. We'll see where this goes. Well, you know where it goes till January second. <laughs> then I get up in the morning, boom! I'm ready to go back down the hill. You can make a vision board. I'll show you my vision board. Yes, let's let's see Chelsea's vision board. This well, is great. I actually have my last three here. <laughs> here we go. These here are previous go. year vision boards. Oh, look at this. Look at ah. Oh, it's okay. You can just highlight some stuff, Chelsea. So uh, each year I have a theme. This uh -huh. year, this year my word was brave. I wanted to be brave. I wanted to conquer my fear of the anchor desk. And okay. So, I mean, people at home might know that we're still conquering that fear, but we're working on it. <laughs> yeah, but you're doing fine. You're doing fine. You learned something out of that uh, uh, thing, you know? Uh, let's see. 2021, it was do you. It was be you. You do you. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. 2020 was move forward. And and did you accomplish that? Yes. Okay. So That's it's very good. Visual, it's like manif manifesting, yes. visualizing it and manifesting. Uh -huh. So if you do decide to do a New Year's resolution, I recommend you put it on a poster board with a lot of other like little goals. Like my, yeah. you know, I have drink water, I have stretch, I have navigate gif navigate difficulties, quick criticism, you know. And Chelsea, what are you thinking about for this year? Do you have an idea of a word or a phrase, maybe? My word this for 2023 is going to be polish. Oh. Oh, right. my. Yeah. my. So, you know, kind of refine. Uh -huh. I'm also going to work on pausing. Polish mm. and pause. Polish and like, pause. Think before you act. Pause and soak it in. Be present. Mm -hmm. Pause. Lots of peas. Yeah. Wow. Like that'll that. save you. That'll save you a lot of trouble down the road. You know that kind of attitude. Uh, so you think before you talk. Right. <laughs> or act. See, he's the wise man. He's the you wise are man. the wise man, Mike. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> well, all right. Listen, we've got to get rolling, but we'll be back oh. to you. I mean, we could do this. We could do this all night. I'm, I have no time <laughs> to wrap the show up. Viewers are, are writing in saying that they love to watch you. So, and hear you sing. So keep that in mind. All right, let's move along a little bit. We'll get back to those two ladies in, at the end of the show. Uh, this is a segment coming up uh, from WNEP's Home and Backyard. Uh, they have got some special things for us in this Christmas show. So. Let's go to Jackie Lewandowski, huh? We're always looking for fun and new ideas for you to use when you're entertaining or at home with the family. We're here with Lisa Deemer of Kitchen Chemistry. And Lisa, you've got the most phenomenal ideas here for us. What are we doing today? We're going to be making butter boards. Ooh, I love it. They're really, really inexpensive and easy to do, and everybody's impressed with them these days. 
So we're going to do a little bit of a variety today, but we're going to start with making fresh butter from scratch. Ooh. It's basically heavy cream. If ever you over whipped your heavy cream, you end up with butter. Nice. Okay. okay. So I'm going to take a quart. All right. Out of a quart of heavy cream, you're going to get about three quarters of a pound. So it's okay. perfect for a butter board. So if you have a KitchenAid, this works wonderfully. You can put it in here, go do a load of laundry, whatever, and just forget about it. In about 20 minutes or so, it'll be butter. I love if it. If you don't have a KitchenAid, yeah. you can grab the kids, you can put it in a, a container like a thermos with a couple of marbles and just shake, oh, shake, shake. Okay. And what I like to do is start slow. Just for a couple of minutes until the cream gets a little bit of air in there. All right. And then I'll throw it on full blast. And I'm going to let this go for about 10 or 15 minutes. Awesome. OK. So after about 10 or 15 minutes, you're going to have a separation of the whey and the butter, or the buttermilk. It's there actually real it. buttermilk. Oh, so look okay. what that looks like. Isn't that looks amazing? It's great. Yes. I can't believe it. Yes. Yeah. So awesome. now what's going to happen is I'm going to take a strainer and I'm just gonna pour the buttermilk off of the butter. Okay. And you literally, literally have butter. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that How amazing? Fun is that? <laughs> so now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna put this back in the bowl, because we're gonna turn this into a butter board. So this is where you would start to add your ingredients. If you're gonna go with savory, you'll add a little salt. You can add some sun-dried tomatoes that we did down there. Anything you want, herbs and spices. Right. We're gonna make this a blackberry. Butter. And I'm only adding a few blackberries just to add texture to the butter. Nice. So let's turn this mixer on just to kind of like smush the berries. Okay. And then that's it. So now what you're going to do, Jackie, is take a blob of butter and smush it on the board and just go to town. Cover nice. the whole board. Okay? okay. Smush away. All right. Sounds good. That I can do. Now, do you make a certain pattern, or you just smush? You can do whatever you want. On the cinnamon sugar one that we did over there, we made little scallops. But it's basically just smushing it on there. Okay. And you want to kind of like work from the middle out. So you don't oh, want to okay. have it sporadic all over the board, because then it might look a little bit messy. So now the butter is basically anchored onto the board. And we're going to also add some blackberry jam mm -hmm. and just drizzle it on there. And then. You're going to sprinkle some of these on. See, the good thing is, is if the butter is a little sloppy, it doesn't matter because you're putting so much I'll stuff stop. on. Nuts adds texture. Butter is kind of like rich, and if you're just eating straight up butter, it, you know, sometimes could not be so good. I got you. This is what's going to make the whole oh, thing pop, because wherever you have a look. mistake that you're not too happy about, just stick a flower on it. <laughs> I go like ahead, the way you it. think. And you remember, it doesn't have to just be butter. You can use cream cheese, and then over there is a cinnamon sugar butter. And we just sprinkled a little cinnamon on top and some chocolate chips, and we're serving them with gingerbread men. This is our savory one, right? This is a savory one. And what ties into the holidays better than Italian theme? So we're doing a sun-dried tomato yes. basil theme. Okay. Red and green. <laughs> yes, red and green. So yes. Jackie, you can spread that around. Right. See how I'm doing that? Just plop it around. Okay. Got to get you into the habit so you can make a bunch I of these know, for your family. I know, I'll be an expert. So what I did was I threw the butter in a food processor with a couple of sun-dried tomatoes. Okay. I threw a little bit of Parmesan in there just to add a little okay. texture to it. It looks great. It doesn't that look gorgeous? Yeah. So now here we go to town again. You can sprinkle with some basil, all right, some fresh sun-dried tomatoes. You can serve it with all different things in here. We're going to serve it with some breadsticks, but we're also going to do some decorations. Okay. So let's plop a little basil leaf and then put a little couple little Christmas balls. Oh my gosh, then look at this. Then it looks like Lisa. holly, right? Come on. <laughs> this is good. And then here you go. <laughs> If you wanted to, you can also sprinkle a little Parmesan right oh, on top. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like snow. Like snow. <laughs> oh, look at that. Doesn't that look beautiful? Yes. Lisa, thank you so much for showing us how to make these beautiful holiday butter boards. And we wish you a very happy holiday season. Thank you. Oh, yum. <laughs> thank you. I must uh, try some of those, I think. Uh, well, there goes the resolution to help me lose weight in next year. I'll just break it before I even start it. So anyway, I have a little something I wanted to add here, and I've done this before. It's a piece that I enjoyed writing and a piece that I enjoyed reciting uh, every time I've had the opportunity. It's perhaps what you might call another look 
at the tradition of Santa Claus coming down the chimney on Christmas Eve. So, it was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, save for a mouse. Truth be told, it was not one mouse, but a family of mice in a mouse house. It was behind a board against a wall that went down a very, very long hall. They ready for bed, this family of four, Mary and Murray, little Twiddle and Tiny D. Santa would soon come to their door, of that they were all certain, you see. For though they had no chimney at all, Santa knew where they were in their rooms so small. In their beds, they snuggled and slept while a lone figure down the hallway crept. Murray Mouse awoke in mid-snore, and listening closely, he heard the creak of the floor. It was Santa, he knew, for he could tell by the sound that it was the merry old man himself out moving around. His reindeer he had left on the roof, Murray thought, and came alone to place the gifts he'd brought. There was a small entrance to his house, not big at all, just the size of a mouse. Murray peeked through it to see for himself if it was, in fact, that spry old elf. Surely it was, Murray soon saw, and thought it grand that something special was held in each white-gloved hand. Santa placed each carefully by the door, first one, then a second, then numbers three and four. Murray Mouse thought Santa was the most wonderful being whose work was done with almost no one seeing. Murray was lucky he knew deep down to see Santa on his only night in town. The tiny little mouse, his eyes all aglow, could not even squeak a tiny hello. He stood agape as Santa began to take his leave, but the white-bearded man turned, then bent to offer his sleeve. Murray climbed up on the red velvet cloth, still timid and shy, but Santa lifted him up till they were eye to eye. He too did not speak, but brought Murray close to his cheek. Do not be afraid, my little friend Mouse. You are as safe as all others in this house. His lips did not move, but his eyes, how they did shine, and it was they, Murray felt, that had spoken the line. Down and down he went back to the floor, then Santa turned and walked toward the door. Murray stood silently watching as he went, but from deep in his heart a message he sent. To Santa and family and good friends too, may this Christmas be the best for you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. For a final recap of our evening, let's go back to the folks that we talked to. Hello. Art. That Thank was you. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. Anybody have anything to uh, to bring up again for the holidays? Who, people you'd like to see again and people where you're going for the holidays, that kind of thing. Well, Anybody? I hope that everybody will join Claire and I on Christmas Day will be working. Yes, we will. Ah, okay. So we're okay. spending our Christmas with everyone because everybody can turn on their TV and join us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. How about you, ma'am? I hope that everyone just takes some time, like Chelsea mentioned earlier, just to pause and settle down. We live in such a world these days where we're constantly on the go, hustling. And this is a crazy time of year. So just to pause enjoy time with family and friends do something you enjoy and just take it all in and make some memories mm -hmm. very good emily and i think Ladies. we shout out dan kozlowski for putting this together yes. three years in a row Hello. 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 Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so dan, it was my pleasure it's always fun with you guys putting together the untraditional christmas special <laughs> thanks for your help and insight there friend oh, no problem thanks for doing it for the third year in a row <laughs> it was a good time had by all, I think. Oh, I had a great so, time back behind the scenes. I'm sorry, what did you say, Matt? It's become a holiday tradition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it really has, three years in a row now. Yeah, that's. I guess that marks it as a tradition, correct? Yeah. Sure. I, guess. I would say so. If it does, it ought to. <laughs> we'll say it's a tradition no matter what. Okay? <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, 
all of you out there in television land, internet land, or wherever from all of us here at the unconventional holiday special and the rest of the staff and management at WNEP TV, let us all say to you a one and a two and a Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good night. Good night. Tell me, because it's this way to Christmas. Thank you.